Hey guys, it's Mike Garcia joining you again uh, from the nation's capital, giving you a little weekend review. Uh, over the weekend, last weekend, I got to uh, participate uh, up in the Antelope Valley at the Homes for Family uh, key ceremony where we give uh, veterans the keys to their new homes. The Home for Family uh, builds these homes. Uh, the veterans themselves participate in the construction of the homes and get the uh, sweat equity. Uh, it's a great way to give uh, low uh, cost, affordable uh, uh, and safe housing to our uh, local community veterans. So congratulations to all of the veterans uh, who received their keys. What a great uh, ceremony that was. This week in uh, DC, it's National Police Week. Uh, so most of the legislation this week is centered around our law enforcement. Uh, I had the opportunity of hosting Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff uh, Justin Diaz and his family, beautiful family out here, give them a tour, uh, and, and more importantly, pay homage to uh, fallen uh, law enforcement officers at the uh, National Police Memorial uh, Park. Uh, and this week we passed legislation to denounce uh, the defunding of police to uh, make sure that we're doubling down on our commitment to law enforcement. Uh, we passed the, uh, the Police Act, uh, which makes uh, sure that uh, the assault of a law enforcement officer uh, by an illegal immigrant is actually a deportable uh, offense. Uh, if you assault a police officer and you're here illegally, uh, you should absolutely be deported. And as you know, I have my Steve Owen uh, bill that's still working its way through the system that says if you uh, kill a uh, law enforcement officer, that's a federal felony with uh, punishment no less than life in prison. Uh, so we're gonna continue to work on that. But like I've always said, we've gotta do more for our local law enforcement, support them, get them the funding that they need. Uh, that was the focus of this week. Uh, also this week, uh, we are starting to release our budgets and many of you have been hearing about uh, how Republicans, including myself, are wanting to defund or lower VA benefits. Uh, absolutely not the case. Obviously, I've been saying uh, this was a false narrative. The proof is in the puddings. The budgets uh, that we're rolling out, uh, the VA budget that uh, the House Republicans released this week is actually uh, $18 billion dollars. Uh, uh, higher than what it was in FY23. So FY24's request for the VA through the House Republican appropriations process is gonna be $18 billion higher than it was last year. We are not cutting VA benefits. We are gonna ask that the VA perform better and get better efficiencies and better customer service, better quality of care for our veterans uh, because they need that, they deserve that. Uh, it's what they've earned. Uh, so we're gonna keep working on that. So. Uh, debt ceiling conversations continue to go. I'm more confident this week than I was last week that we will get to a negotiated package. The nation will not default on its uh, debt. Don't let uh, uh, folks try to uh, uh, scare you on that. We will uh, honor our debts, we will pay our debts, but we will also change the behavior patterns moving forward on how we spend money so that we're not continuously uh, running up the tab and not uh, being able to pay the bill without having to raise the debt ceiling. So that's, uh, that's gonna be the focus next week as well. Uh, this week, uh, the Durham report came out. After a couple of years, it is now very clearly apparent uh, that the FBI has been actually abusing uh, some of its authorities and tools uh, to include the abuse of FISA uh, for political purposes. And this is a, 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 a testimony, frankly, uh, that the FBI has been doing things that are frankly corrupt uh, and we need to hold them accountable. This is on the heels of a report from the Intelligence Committee that I sit on that we released that cited the fact that Secretary of Blinken, before he was uh, uh, nominated as Secretary of State, was working with President Biden's campaign, solicited uh, a letter uh, from then ex-CIA Director Morell to testify to the fact that uh, the Hunter laptop, the Hunter Biden laptop story was a Russia propaganda uh, hoax. Uh, which it, it in fact was not, and they were still able to get the ex-CIA director to write this letter, get 51 intelligence uh, community leaders to sign onto this letter, saying that Hunter Biden's laptop story was a Russia hoax. We know that's all fake now, we know that's all not true, uh, and all this is starting to come out, as well as the uh, FBI whistleblower. So we're gonna be holding uh, the FBI, we're gonna be holding all federal agencies that uh, uh, frankly are using their powers and their tools for political purposes rather than to support and defend the Constitution. We're going to be holding them accountable uh, here very soon. So uh, with that, guys, I encourage you to uh, follow the newsletter. I'll be back in the district uh, tomorrow um, and uh, this weekend, throughout this weekend, meeting with businesses, meeting with constituents, uh, and uh, participating in local community events. Looking forward to seeing you and uh, back here in D.C. next week. So with that, guys, God bless. Uh, have a great weekend.